we brought water from home and we did a bunch of tests to see what the quality was. We're gonna use a test strip. Each of them have one strip and if you turn your uh, manual to page two, there's a table and for each of the tests, there's a time for deep in. So you're gonna deep the strip to your water for a specific time and then you match with those color called booklets. One, two, three. What am I doing? Dip. Okay. Like, like, and out. And now we wait 60 seconds. So we did like pH testing, turbidity. Well, turbidity is how, how much carbon it covers. If it rain just goes down the mountain, it goes up the a bunch of dirt. The dirt's going to cover the water. Turbidity of coke. So this is nitrate. So you have about five, right? Between 0 0.5 and 5. And then uh, this is nitrite. It's less than 0 0.3, 0 0.15. Right now we're testing. We're testing for the total hardness of the water. It seems to be the harder colors, the darker color, and then for pH, uh, same thing. Darker color seems to be more basic. In testing this water for pH, if the water is too basic or the pH is too high, that could be bad for like the piping and stuff, and also make you kind of sick. Something that's basic that you probably know about are like soaps and detergents. And then at the opposite end of the scale would be something that's a low pH or acidic, so that would be something like lemon juice. So a good number for your water would be like a pH between 6.5 and 8. The pH is not the same, 11, because water is supposed to be 6.5 to 8.5, and 11 is all that. These are total dissolved solids uh, meters, and it just measures all the different ions that are in the water, so the different salts and things like that. We are cleaning purple or dirty water and we are trying to make it clear as drinking water. We're creating a filter out of coffee filters, sand, rocks, charcoal, paper towels. The teacher is using an example as if you're hiking and you don't have any clean water left. Our five groups are measuring the turbidity, conductivity, and color of the water that they're filtering. So far, most of the teams have gotten the water to be clear, but um, that doesn't always test it. We know that electricity conducts, right? So there must be something else that's in your water that's making it more conductive. So do you know uh, what you can dissolve in water so that it conducts electricity? Maybe salt, right, exactly. Sand. Eight coffee filters, uh, paper towel, and a lot of charcoal. Yeah. Playing the rocks in the sand. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's a good idea. Grayish, blackish. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
so that cleans the water. One is a nano filter. You use a piece of membrane uh, so that creates a barrier, and then you the use the pressure as the driving force. Of you, filter, you filter the dirty water through this membrane, and then you get clean water. The, they call it the reverse osmosis. Osmosis is water flowing, and then reverse is just like getting all the stuff out of it. The third one is the distillation, which basically um, evaporates the water, and then that gets out uh, the salt. And then the fourth one is the life straw. You pour in water here, and based on gravity, the water just filters through the membrane. This is clean water being collected from this outlet right here. We are a wastewater collection and treatment authority for the Greater State College area. So what you're here to see today is what we call our advanced water treatment system. The original feed water is the wastewater that comes from your homes and businesses, and it goes through microfiltration. There's 90 of these in each microfiltration unit, and there's thousands of straws, right? Between the MF unit and the RO unit, we now have an ozone generator. You can see that it says the inverter is on, it's making ozone. Reverse osmosis quality water goes through uh, ultraviolet light for disinfection. And also we add a little bit of uh, sodium hypochlorite. So Spring Creek is a high quality cold water fishery and so we have very strict limits on the water that we discharge into the stream. We are drawing how Spring Creek looks to our eye and then we are going to go into the water and investigate what's in the water as in the animals that live there and the water quality. On the outline of the stream itself, we want to draw all of like the big things we see here. These are cross sections, so pretend this is like the top of the cake, right? We're looking right onto it. We're just drawing like the rocks, the water, how deep it is. We're going to look at pools, ripples, and runs, and then the next one is the particles on the stream bottom. I found um, a snail shell right here. It's a rock that looks like a shark too. Maybe it is a shark. Probably not. Yeah, and so we're gonna have a competition to see who can find the most caddisflies, mayflies, and stoneflies, and then whatever else you guys find out here. One person's gonna be holding the D-net. The other person is going to be in front of it, kicking up rocks for a minute. A team, team, team. We found everything at least. It's a caddisfly larva. We really got a lot of what stuff. What is that? An amphipod. So would you guys say Spring Creek is a healthy stream? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Well, someone's bag kept exploding. <laughs> yeah. Their favorite part of camp was? Eating pizza. TV. This is just shrinking. There's no interesting about it. It's really it's interesting. interesting. <laughs> it's the most interesting thing around, so I'm helping. Was this the best thing that you've done all week? No. 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 <laughs> you should film it or else the parents will think that's what we do all week. I know. <laughs>